Hello, I'm Dida Fakhri here on Al Jazeera, and these are the headlines. Tens of thousands of Iraqis have called for an end to the U.S. military presence in the country on the eighth anniversary of the invasion. Provident Shia cleric Muqtada Assad says he will relaunch the armed resistance if the U.S. does not put its personnel out completely before the end of the year. And he says that includes staff at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Protesters in Cairo returned to Tahrir Square on Saturday after military police stormed it overnight. Witnesses say around 300 soldiers swept into the square around 3 a.m. local time. The demonstrators formed a human chain to protect several defecting officers who had joined them. A curfew is in place between 2 and 5 a.m. Tear gas again drifts across the streets of the capital, Sana'a, aimed at those protesting against Yemen's leader, not just against his rule, but at his rejection of mediated talks. He has few friends at home and now even fewer overseas. The protesters, furious, President Ali Abdullah Saleh said no to the offer by Gulf states to act as the mediator. The president has no right to refuse this initiative, especially since the coalition of countries of the GCC are not just one nation. So if he actually agrees to some of these suggestions, he will at least leave with some dignity. But if he dismisses them completely, he will leave with this hanging over his head, insulted and humiliated. Friday's demonstrations left several people dead and injured. On Saturday, up to 100,000 people marched in Taiz to protest the deaths. Not only has the Yemeni president turned his back on the Gulf Peace Initiative, he's turning his back on any contact with one of its leading states. He's recalled his envoy to Qatar. That was apparently prompted by a suggestion by the Qatari prime minister that Salah stepped down. Protesters are camped out near Sana University calling for Salah to leave office. They, like the president, are defiant in their stance, calling for change for almost two months. Caroline Malone, Al Jazeera. In your view, does the Constitution require the president to get congressional authorization before launching a military operation in Libya? It, it, it depends. If you're going into, if you want to send uh, troops in there, yes. Soldiers on the move in Ivory Coast. presidential claimant Alassane Ouattara take up combat positions along Abidjan's northern corridor road. Gunfire is audible as soldiers cross the road. Soldiers are trying to secure the road which links the city to the north of the country. As Ouattara's troops move around Abidjan, his rival, Laurent Bagbo, is now isolated in a bunker. Ouattara appears for now to have decided to corner Bagbo, rather than try to drive him out by military force. He has vowed to concentrate on trying to restore normal life in the country's economic capital. His ability to unify the West African state may be undermined by reports of atrocities by his forces. The UN says it has found more than 100 corpses in the past 24 hours, adding to the 800 dead reported by AIDS groups last week. Okay. Deborah Luderbeck, Reuters. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Saturday, April 9th. 2011 and I'm Darko. Welcome to part two. There's only going to be two parts today. Uh, my website is www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. We're going to start off with uh, Chuck Schumer's statement. Uh, Senate will, quote, never, never, never defund Planned Parenthood. Senator uh, Charles Schumer vowed yesterday that the provision to defund Planned Parenthood that passed the House earlier this year is never, never, never going to pass the Senate. Moving on, uh, Maryland House passes bill allowing illegal immigrants in state tuition. And this, of course, is all this is all done on purpose, um, just to show you that you're living in the North American Union. You have no borders. And... Um, and this is why you have people like this who are probably uh, Council on Foreign Relations members, 
um, Freemason, Skull and Bones, uh, you'll have Trilateral Commissioned, uh, part of, you know, Rand Corporation. All of these people are part of these secret groups, and they're not really secret. Everybody knows what they are, but they are private, and they do things, and they steer uh, policy, and, you know, people that are going to be affected by this have no say whatsoever, and this is the New World Order. This is uh, this uh, technocracy or this so social or scientific dictatorship, right? Spain youth rally against unemployment, and then we have Venezuela inflation rate shrinks, and then we have uh, number of the week, U.S. spends 141% more on health care. And then this, Washington Post and CBS receiving money from Obamacare slush fund. Two mainstream news organizations are receiving hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars from Obamacare's early retire reinsurance program. And it's a $5 billion grant. Moving on, regulators shut two more banks. Uh, in Nevada and Illinois, which is a bunch of crap because banks that should have went under during the crisis, the big banks, well, they got bailed out, but the small, smaller banks that are local and, uh, well, I, I guess you could say more solvent, even though they're all insolvent, uh, were shut down. And this is the whole point of the crisis, to give the FDIC and the Federal Reserve uh, dictatorial powers in order to, or have the power to shut down smaller banks that are competing with their big international globalist banks. Uh, and they don't like competition, like Rockefeller said. It's a sin. Democrat agrees that America faces the, quote, most predictable economic crisis in history within two years. That's Danny Davis, Democrat of Illinois. Red Cross aid hasn't reached Japan quake victims. So look at that. The relief organization has distributed none of the $1 billion it has collected. The chief cabinet secretary says the process must be streamlined. I, that's why I said don't donate to them. And one person left a comment, not checking their facts or anything. And so there you go, brother. There's some more facts for you to incorporate into your reality that if you donate to these big globalist, uh, uh, what do you call it, charitable organizations, the money will not go to the people. Salt Lake City goes wallet free with ISIS. Ooh, a nice Egyptian name too. From Ivory Coast to Libya and beyond, Africa threatened with Western military subjugation. And then we have Ivory Coast. Rebels have killed hundreds, says observers. Reports of mass murders and rapes in villages. Pro-government forces also accused of atrocities. Uh, Ivory Coast UN airstrike shows West new appetite for military action. The UN strikes for the first time. Look at this. For the first time ever, the world government, the United Nations, uh, basically declared war on Libya through the, uh, using the UN resolution, and they didn't even abide by it. They just went ahead and attacked them um, uh, fiercely and immediately. And then we have the UN uh, carrying out airstrikes. So the UN now is carrying out its own missions and declaring its own wars. That's very, very scary for us uh, small government people or us who promote no government at all, right? It says here, uh, Libyan rebels face military surge on key outposts. And then moving on here, Gates plays down al-Qaeda or al-Qaeda's involvement in post-Gaddafi Libya. That's right, al-Qaeda is working with the rebels, and you do have an ex-Mujahideen uh, uh, training the rebels. And they are being supplied by uh, France, the uh, uh, UK, uh, possibly Israel even, and the West. General, U.S. troops not ideal, but may be considered in Libya. And of course, they'll have to get, uh, like I said, congressional approval, like uh, uh, Leahy said, but will they? No says here, NATO fears war without end in Libya. Then NATO says it planned, its planes struck Libyan rebels, so NATO killing the same people it's supposed to be uh, freeing, right? And we already saw that coming. NATO slammed for Libya civilian deaths, and that's called collateral damage, right? They're not there to help the people or their sovereignty. They're there to take away their sovereignty and uh, enslave those people, just like we are in the West. The U.S. slapped sanctions on five senior Libyan officials, and then Iraqi cleric threatens action if U.S. forces remain. So Gates says U.S. Iraq troops might extend stay. All right, so I guess we know what's going to happen, right? And uh, U.S. envoy to Sudan, Abaye conflict could spark war. So just by them being there could spark a war. So what? They're going to go there. Syria's biggest day of unrest yet uh, sees at least 20 people killed, unfortunately. Uh, you can't do it peacefully. It says Saudis hold second day of protest, which is a big deal when Saudis uh, protest. Uh, oil usually spikes. Sudan accuses Israel of attack, and Carterum reserves the right to react. Then we have uh, two killed for reporting on Bahrain. That's a big, uh, 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 basically a big 
blackout on Bahrain right now. Leading Bahrain activists uh, arrested. I heard he was killed. Dozens hurt. 800 detained in Bahrain. Then we have Israel pounds Hamas targets in Gaza for the third day. And then more news on Israel. Israeli airstrikes kill Palestinians in Gaza. Lebanon objects to UN uh, to Israel spying. That's right. They're getting spied on by Israeli drones on a daily base invading their airspace. Gazans uh, killed in Israeli tank shelling. Then Israeli warplanes killed three Palestinians. It says a fresh Israeli airstrike on Rafa in the besieged Gaza Strip has killed at least three Palestinians, bringing the death toll since Thursday to 18 Palestinian medics reported. Then we have uh, Palestinians fire rockets at Israel after Hamas, which was created by what Israel's Mossad militia commander killed. So they killed their commander. And then look at this. Israel intercepts rocket with new Iron Dome system, which I reported on a couple weeks ago. Oh, see, they had intentions of using that thing, didn't they? It says here, 12 killed in Gaza's deadliest 24 hours since 2008-2009 war. And uh, a lot of this started when uh, Israel was celebrating its holiday, and they just carried out a false flag against itself, attack itself, so that they can go on and uh, basically clamp down on Palestine. And it says here, 12 killed in Gaza's deadliest 24 hours since 2008. We just covered that. New EU anti-terrorist body will be like the KGB. And um, that's what these senior Eurocrats are saying. House votes to overturn net neutrality rules. This is a big deal. The U.S. House of Representatives voted on Friday to overturn net neutrality rules aimed at ensuring an open Internet, setting the stage for a clash with the Senate and President Barrio Satoro. Jurors, jurors vote to acquit alleged Cuban terrorists. An exclusive Obama has taken profoundly troubling position on assassination, says ACLU, tells Raw. And then we have U.S. to use Facebook, Twitter to issue terror alerts and of course they created that right it came from darpa it says here and funded and that by and managed i guess handled by the cia and nsa it says here u.s trains activists to evade security forces then social mobility drive to track us to age 30 everyone will have their educational and work achievements tracked from birth to the age 30 under radical plans to improve social mobility in other words they want to be able to track you better russian security there you are an asset and that's how they see you as an asset what can they get out of you? So they need to track their assets just like they track uh, goods uh, with barcodes and that. Russian Security Service wants to ban Skype and uh, Gmail. Then the U.S. has infiltrated Ecuador's police and military. China law enforces our law enforcers urged to serve people and guard social justice. No, they are there to guard uh, uh, assets, banks' assets, right? That's what they're there for, to uh, enforce political law. So they're not there to serve the people. They're there to serve the banks and the corporations and protect their assets. CIA, provincial government, blamed for Swabi suicide attack targeting Pakistani politician and France arrests Burqa ban protesters. Dutch party introduces anti-Islam bill. And then we have this, more U.S. anti-Muslim hearings held in uh, New York. Then Tibetan monk dies from torture injuries that he sustained under uh, Chinese authority. Then British submarine shooting sparked by shore leave dispute. And uh, then we have this story, Return of the Triumph with the skull and crossbones uh, flying defiantly at its mass submarine that launched attack on Gaddafi comes home. So look at that, what that tells you guys, the skull and bones. The Skull and Bones mission, right? They went over there to take out Gaddafi and whatever, right? But it's called Triumph. And then look at this, another Skull and Bones. Uh, Glenn Beck wears a Freemasonic patch on his show. On, and there's actually another uh, picture. God, I keep doing this. There's another picture of uh, Glenn Beck wearing the, uh, I don't know if it's a sash or the you know thing that goes over the cummerbund or the thing that goes over your, your stomach with a skull and bones with his wife. So three in 10 Americans admit to consuming alcohol and alcohol increases risk of cancer. The 7.1 quote aftershock, no, it was just another heart buzz because they're actually doing, uh, doing a decent job and just hanging in there. Cleaning up Japan's radioactive water could take decades. Mobsters on a mission, how Japan's mafia launched an aid effort. Radiation standards are up 1,000% higher than is safe for the human body. And then we have Group warns EPA ready to increase radioactive release guidelines. So it's going to raise the guidelines. Uh, Japan eases food restrictions despite nuclear concerns and government bans rice planting contaminated soil. South Korea shuts schools amid Japan radiation fears. Then France de detects radioactive iodine rainwater. Doctors uh, urge to use their uh, patient trust to...
sell the CO2 tax, carbon emissions linked to Europe's hay fever rise. No, that's the spraying that they're doing. And mother on trial for murder after allegedly failing to administer chemo. Thank you. This is GGI.